Hey everybody, welcome back. We are still on per unit subsidies. We're focusing on the benefit of the per unit subsidy. This is part two. In this one, we're just using the subsidy wedge, the per unit subsidy wedge. It's right over here. In part one, what did we do? We shifted the supply curve and we shifted the demand curve. Why did we shift the supply curve? Because so many per unit subsidies, the government is physically writing the check to the supplier, so we shifted the supply curve. Also though, sometimes for some per unit subsidies, the government can actually write the check, cut the check to the consumer and give it directly to them. And in that case, we shift the demand curve. However, we found out it really didn't matter which curve we shifted. It didn't matter who government was actually giving the money to, okay? As far as the economic realities, as far as how much the benefit of the subsidy, how much of that money went to the consumer and how much went to the producer. Now. We're going to use the wedge because it doesn't matter which curve we shift, and we found that out in the part one, we're going to use the wedge to put a ribbon on this, to close this out so you totally, fully, 100% understand it, okay? Here's my subsidy wedge. What I like to tell students when they look at a subsidy wedge, the important part is that red base right there, that, vert that vertical amount. That vertical amount, that base needs to remain perfectly vertical. No slant, okay? Keep that perfectly vertical. And that is the per unit subsidy. That's key. Now this part right here, I like to say is soft clay. This thing is just gonna mush in there. It's gonna mush in there until it fits right between the supply and demand curve. It's going to do that. Now, I, I don't want you to be too mechanical about this. Why is it going to do that? It's going to do that because after the market, I mean, after the per unit subsidy is given, the market will clear. And what I mean by that is the quantity supplied and quantity demanded are going to change by the same amount. And the only way for that to happen is for that subsidy wedge to fit in there perfectly. Let me say that again, because it's so important. Why is it gonna fit in there vertically? So perfectly between the two curves? Because at the end of the day, after the per unit subsidy is given, the market is still going to clear. QS is still gonna equal QD. Guys, prices are still flexible. PC and PP are going to flex until the market clears. Because if it doesn't clear, we're either getting a shortage or a subsidy. Both of those would make us change where we're at in this whole thing, okay? So you can take that wedge, fit it in there perfectly. So once it fits in, once it gets stuck right in there, you've done it. You've put it fully in. This is now Q subsidy. All right, QM was right there. Quantity supplied equal quantity demanded. Now QS equals quantity demanded right there. Now, take a look at our graph, okay? Same type of graph as part one. Demand far more inelastic, supply far more elastic. The producers far more responsive to price, the consumers far less responsive to price, more inelastic, okay? So subsidy is either given to the consumer or the producer. We don't care. We're just going to handle it with a, with a subsidy wedge. We're not even going to shift the curve. Now take a look at that. The top of that wedge, what curve am I on? I'm on the supply curve. So that, of course, gives me PP, price producer, all right? Now, the bottom of the subsidy wedge right there, the bottom of that subsidy wedge, what are we touching? We're touching the demand curve, okay? That's price consumer, demand curve, price consumer. And look at the takeaway. Here it is, guys. Price producer, sure it went up. Producers are happy. Their per unit revenue is going up, but by a far less amount as price consumer went down. And the consumer loves it when their price goes down. Guys, here's what I'm telling you. The per unit subsidy, PP to PC, is that vertical distance, okay? Of that per unit subsidy, okay, I'm gonna just take that PM right there, I'm gonna mark it right there. Per unit, this amount is going to the producer. Yay, producer, they're happy, they're getting a benefit, but yay, big time consumer. They're getting far larger benefit, a far larger benefit. Why? Because they were far more inelastic. So let's take us through that one last time, okay? Now, PP, all right, price producers going up by that vertical distance. So let's take a look at it. We're gonna move along the supply curve. Remember, they're far more elastic. So as price starts to go up, the quantity supplied is increasing at a fairly good rate as price goes up, okay? You see that moving quickly. Now, on the demand side though, as price goes down for the consumer, yes, we're moving to the, to the right, 
Okay, and that's what's important, not the fact that we're going down. What's important is where quantity demanded is going right, but at a less, a much um, slower pace, if you will, okay? The quantity demanded is not changing as fast as quantity supplied in relation to price. And there it is, okay? The price is going to have to change a lot more for the demander to get their quantity demanded to increase. Remember, it's about the right word, that, direct, that amount right there, to get their quantity demanded to increase by the same amount as the quantity supply. Hence, the bigger benefit of the subsidy goes to the market participant, market participant means supplier or demander, goes to the market participant that is far more inelastic, that is more inelastic. I didn't need the word far more in there. It's who's ever more inelastic gets the bigger benefit. Now, let's go back to per unit taxes just for a second in our mind. Who took on the bigger burden of the per unit tax? The one that was more inelastic, less responsive to price. Who's going to get the bigger benefit when it comes to subsidies? The one that is more inelastic. It's inelastic both ways, guys. They're going to get the bigger benefit, okay? The one who doesn't respond to the price change as much as the other market participant. Hopefully that made sense. Hopefully you've got it now. Just to finish it off, okay, I want to just do the box. I want to do the government outlay in total. There it is. That thing right there, total government outlay. Per unit subsidy, how many goods are going to be sold, all the way out to Q subsidy right there. So per unit, all that, that whole rectangle is the government outlay. How much of that money is going to the producer and the consumer? Let me go back to PM, draw that blue line. This top part, blue to red, that, that rectangle, I don't know why I like to say triangle, that rectangle, blue to red, that is the producer's benefit, okay? Benefit, because we're talking subsidies. Blue to red right here, that blue line down to that red line, that is the consumer's benefit. They both benefit, the consumer benefits more. Man, I hope that made sense to you. Thanks for watching that. See you in the next video.